guys welcome back so today is my backyard garden tour for August and there's a lot of fun things in the yard that I'm going to show you and talk about and things are really filling out and are full and beautiful things are starting to cool down a little bit here too which is super nice I'm so happy that they're cooling down a bit into the mid and lower 90s we've been in the 100s above 100 most of July so it's so nice to have just a little bit of cool down so let's take a look at my backyard and see what's blooming right now. I think we'll start here this time just to keep the variety a little different. <laughs> so this is a sneak peek at my front yard garden tour with my tomato garden. So we'll talk about that in the next video. But back here I have my Lady of Shalott rose and you can see it's already had its second flush and it just throws out these big canes. Whoops. <laughs> lots of petals raining down but it's so beautiful it's getting ready to bud up for the third time and I will get like four rounds with this plant so it's so beautiful check out my rose garden tour for this one and it's just one of my favorite roses this is its second year and it's massive I think this next time I come in and deadhead I'm gonna like really clean it up and tidy it up because it's just kind of wild right now <laughs> But it's been really, really fun. I really love it. Um, the lavender here, I think this is English lavender. It's definitely my favorite lavender. And it's looking so beautiful, kind of intermixed with this. I think this is Euonymus. I thought this plant would get taller, but we'll see. I kind of like that it is low growing. I've seen here in areas in Utah where it's kind of low growing plant. So I might have to plant something tall back here. I definitely want to plant something a little bit bigger and taller in this space. The Vinca are doing good. I did have one perish, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> this one's not doing so well either. I don't know if they're getting too much water or too little. <laughs> having a hard time knowing that with Vinca. They're kind of new to me. They're beautiful. I love this combination. I'm going to put in a little video here of this rose that was blooming with the lavender and the pink and I knew this color combination was going to be so pretty and it really was or it is. <laughs> so I really like this one. The knockout roses had another full flush. I did give them a good cut back and now it's time to come back and trim them up again. As you can see I still have some blooming with some beautiful color but I have some that are starting to just be done and so I will get one more round out of these not as many blooms but for sure by the end of the season and then I have some more over here this area isn't quite what I envisioned um, I do have one marigold that I planted a seed that is taking forever to bloom and I can see one here and I'll be so happy because I definitely want to get some seeds out of that one so I can plant seeds because I think it's going to be so beautiful. <laughs> I want to try it again next year but plant the seeds more in the springtime. But I love this ageratum with the African daisies, this yellow. African daisies, the color is really pretty. The only thing I don't love about it is they do have these which just look kind of dead and gross. So. Next year, I might do something a little different here, but that's what's fun. Every year you kind of play up and do something different. So then I have a denim and lace right here. It's kind of a random spot. I think I might plant this back over here by my shed where I have some other ones just because I think this is kind of a weird spot for it. I'm also getting another round of this baby's breath. It's a pink ground cover baby's breath and it's one of my favorite things. Just beautiful light pink delicate flowers. Love this around my rocks. And then my yellow petunias are doing well here. This is just kind of a generic brand. I also came along and put chelated iron on a lot of my plants. A lot of them are starting to bounce back. This one's starting to bounce back a little bit, but I did order some more because I think I do need some more. But here are the knockout roses on this side as well. But I really love that combination with the purple, the dark pink, and then the light yellow. So that's been really fun. Um, on my Back to the Fuchsia Salvia, I cut it back. It is bringing me a few more blooms. This is so beautiful in the spring. And then I just wish it did a little bit more in the summertime. I, I usually only get just a few, a few more coming back but next year I think I'm going to try to leave them give it a little try right here 
this does look a little battered right now. We had two major rainstorms come in and just knock a bunch of petals off these. They were looking really beautiful about a week ago. They were kind of in their prime and now they're a little bit sad. But if you will notice from my last garden video, I did come in here and take out those asters. They were just too big for this space. They look like weeds and I moved them in another spot over here along the creek that I will show you here in a minute. Those things get massive though, so I have a feeling I'm gonna be moving those probably next spring. But I also came in here and trimmed up my boxwoods just a little bit, just because they were getting some long new growths coming out of them. And everything looks a little bit more tidy around here. I do need to come in and take out some of these spent blooms here on my geraniums, um, but I will do that for another time. The rain knocked a lot of petals off of them, but they still look beautiful and still add color. I do love the pink and red. I never thought I would like that combination, but I really, really do. I do want to show you my baskets up here. They're doing pretty well. I'm really happy with them. This is the Proven Winners Mix and I like them. I did give them a little trim, although I really feel like I didn't have to, but I wanted to. They don't they don't get like sun on the full side of them. The back side doesn't get much. They were just a little scraggy in the back. So I did cut them back a little bit, but I feel like I probably should have left them a little bit more. I did leave this one a little bit more. And so it does look a little happier than the other ones. I'm gonna try to get up close so you can see them a little better. They're not quite showing as pretty as they are. Then, hi Piper. Let's hop down here and take a look at this. I give this a hard cut back because it just needed it. It was getting kind of long and lanky. This has had aphids and grasshoppers. I murdered one of the grasshoppers. <laughs> Still feel kind of bad about it, but anyway, it'll, it'll bounce back. I think it'll do a little bit better now that it's been cut back, so we'll see. I do have a lot of chomping going on right here though. Hmm. That looks like budworms. It's time for me to come in here and spray for budworms. I do it weekly, but I've been out of town and so it's probably been a couple weeks since I've done it. So I really need to come in and do it. This ivy is growing up finally. It's taking forever. I never thought ivy would take that long. And I know this star jasmine probably will not last another winter. The other one died over this last winter and really they're they're supposed to be for zone eight. So I wanted ivy, something that's for sure gonna come back and it's just taking forever to grow. I have some over here too, but hopefully, I don't know, by next spring we'll have a little more growth on that. Let's take a view from this direction. And then I think what we'll do is we'll come and go up the other side of the creek this time because last time we went this way for my garden tour and I think I wanna go this way. So these Paradise Proven Winners Petunias are doing pretty good for the amount of sun that they get. I wanted to just put in something here. It needed a little bit of dark color compared to what I have back here. I have a lot of lighter pink. So I'm glad that I added that. I think in a month or so, they'll probably be a little bit bigger. <laughs> I didn't expect them to get huge. The soil here is terrible. It's dry, it doesn't get watered well, and so they're doing the best that they can with their conditions. Here we have this beautiful hellebores along this rock. I love how they've gotten bigger. They kind of fill in this space, and these give a beautiful show in February, March, April, May. They go all the way till then, their blooms, and then they leave this beautiful foliage, which I really, really love. Here's where I moved that aster, well, three of them. <laughs> And I was reading up on them and realized they can get up to three feet wide. And I have three and they're tucked in about four feet of space. So it's really not going to work that great. I'm going to see how well they transplanted and if I'll get some blooms out of them this fall. But I'll probably be moving those out, at least two of them, and only keep one. Asters are not my favorite and I really don't feel too obligated to keep it. So we'll see. <laughs> Anyway, this primrose is beautiful brown cover. It is kind of spreading down here too. I'm hoping it's not taking over my luminary opalescence flux. It's right here. It's kind of done blooming, but I'm hoping it gives me another flush, but we'll see. And then I love this Chetsky gold dwarf birch bush. It's so beautiful in the daytime. It really glows this light yellow and it looks really pretty next to my tree. My tree's looking kind of sad at the base. I'm trying to give it more water because it was looking a little dry. <laughs> um, so right now this isn't the best angle, but I can't wait till this gets bigger and fills in that space. 
Really the stars of the show right now are these black eyed Susans. They're so, so pretty. I love them next to this blue pine. I had them like that in my old yard and I'm just really, really enjoying that. And then the daisies had their turn. I cut them back. And then another thing that I'm just absolutely loving. And one of my favorite flowers in the garden is this serendipity allium. This is a proven winners. They also have millennial or millennium or a more generic brand of this, but such a beautiful flower. I love this so much. And I actually just bought more. I'm gonna have a video probably after this one, well it will be after this one where I plant these in different areas of my yard because I just love them so much. I love the interest they bring even when they're not blooming because they have this grass-like foliage. They do, when they're blooming, smell like onion, but only when you get close to them. So I just wanted to note that. If you don't like the smell of onions, because alliums are basically onions, then you're probably not gonna like this. But look how beautiful my super tunia bubblegum is right now with the sweet potato vine and my mizu over here with my hydrangeas. Loving that so much. They're finally starting to spill over my wall, which was really the vision that I had in this space. So I'm super, super happy about that. I also have plans what I'm gonna do here next year and I'm gonna put some flowers in the front. So just to add a little more interest in front, but I'm really loving it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about my hydrangeas. I did come in here and give them chelated iron. As you can see, the leaves down here are yellow, and that does mean that they are low on iron. So I'm gonna come in here and give them one more shot. I just ordered some, like I mentioned before. I just love these with this color. It's just so pretty, the chartreuse in the pink. And I wanted to say, these are the second year stems, so you can see they're a little bit stronger. And these are the first year ones, so they're just not quite as strong, but each year they're gonna get stronger. And so next year, these will be a little more upright, and I just feel like this held up so well. I was surprised during the storm and these incredible hydrangeas are meant to be a little more sturdy than like your Annabelle hydrangeas. And so I'm super impressed with them. I have had some burning, but I feel like um, as this tree here, this honeysuckle gets bigger, they'll be a little more protected in the late afternoon. And so anyway, I'm just loving this. I know these are gonna get massive and beautiful and that's exactly what I want. They do start out white and then they turn to this chartreuse green and they're just, they're just massive, if you can see here. So I'm super excited about this hedge, and then someday this will all grow together to this boxwood hedge and kind of be in front of it. This Mizu is awesome. One of my favorite, favorite plants this year that I have discovered, and I just love it. I want it in more areas. As you can see, the rain kind of made some of these really floppy, but that's okay. Next year, they'll be a little stronger. <laughs> I wanted to show you the difference between these sweet potato vines. So this is the proven winter ones. I, I can't remember the name of this one exactly. I'll try to look it up and put it on the screen. But this one's the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime, I believe. And it has a more mounding habit, so I wanted to show you the difference. I think I do like this one a little bit better, but it does spread and invade and kind of cross over on your other plants. So you do have to like come in and cut it back. In fact, you gotta cut this one back too. They're just, <laughs> they're just crazy. But I love how over here, they're just kind of intermixing together and look how beautiful it is. I know these hydrangeas here get a little more sun than the other side, so they are a little bit more fried, but I'm hoping as this um, pear tree here gets bigger, these will be a little bit more protective and they're still kind of young, so <laughs> we gotta give them a little chance. Anyway, I love this. <laughs> bubblegum super tunia it's just amazing amazing let's move over here to our pots they're really doing great i do like these african daisies but as you can see they do leave a lot of these which i don't love and this is kind of a part sun area and i liked my <laughs> containers a little better last year although everything's done quite well in here this one does get more sun than the other one i have these beautiful new guinea impatience this jazzberry petunia and then i popped down here i wanted more color so i did a bubblegum petunia it doesn't get a ton of sun so it just has a few blooms but i still love it and my topiaries that need a little <laughs> a little shaping again i'll probably not do that until fall though 
but this one doesn't quite get as much sun so it's not quite as full as the other one but you can see the ageratum didn't get eaten up and swallowed up like it did in the other one and i'm not getting a ton of blooms out of these at least right now because it doesn't get a ton of sun but i i don't know the colors are pretty together but i'm always looking forward and seeing what i'm going to do the next year let's look here at my pear tree I've got two pears on there. We'll see how they do. <laughs> my peach tree, the peaches are getting bigger every day. They're looking really nice. And a few of them are looking really pink, the ones that are getting the sun. And it just makes me so happy. Peaches are one of my favorite fruits, so I'm super excited about it. This is the fourth year we've had to move this tree a few times. <laughs> and it's done well. This is the first year that we're gonna get fruit off of it. I think one year I was gonna get fruit off of it and the raccoons came and took it all. <laughs> and the other years, I really wanted to just let it root in and not fruit, so I picked all the fruit off of it. Okay, here we have Gonfrina. I love this Gonfrina so much. This is the Monrovia brand, and I like it quite a bit better than Proven Winners. I've grown both, and I went back to this one. I specifically sought it out at Home Depot because I like the growth habit of it. I like the color of it. It's like a deep purple. It's showing up quite a bit brighter here on my film, but it is just fantastic. And then it gets a little bit lighter in color as we get into autumn and then it turns almost into like a straw flower. It gets really dry and you can use it in arrangements. I don't know if I'll ever cut it for arrangements. This is technically like my cut flower garden, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna bring anything inside. But do you remember those seeds that I put in here? These zinnia seeds in July, it was kind of late and I'm finally getting some flowers on them, but we have a longer season. I don't know, I think these will take me into October. So it'll be really nice. They're just starting to bloom. Um, I can't remember the varieties, but if you go back to that video, you can see what variety that I planted, but they're just getting ready to all bloom. And so it's so fun. They put on quite a bit of growth in a month. So it's been really great. I guess it's been just a little bit over a month. This salvia is doing okay. It kind of got hit hard in the last rainstorm. We had these gladiolus and I'll put a video in here so you can see when they were all blooming and they just look so pretty. Gorgeous color. They're more orange than I expected. I got them a bowl pack of them at Home Depot and I have learned that they don't always look like what they look like on the package if you buy them at Home Depot. <laughs> anyway, that's just kind of what I've learned. They were an orange, they weren't quite a peach and I think they were supposed to be like a peach and a pink if I'm right, if I remember correctly. But just keep that in mind. I've gotten dahlias before at Home Depot too and they're just never quite what they portray them to be. <laughs> And that's okay, I've learned. And they're okay, they're more of a tropical flower. I do like them, but I think next year I'll probably try something different. But look at these sun incredible sunflowers from Proven Winners. They just keep growing and growing and growing and rebudding and rebudding. And I have not even touched these, you guys. They're just so beautiful. And the bees just really love it over here. It's just so, so nice. Okay, let's go back over here to my window box <laughs> looking a little sad i'll put a video in here of it really full that verbena was just really taking over and so i came in here and gave it a hard cut back and as you can see it's starting to just barely flush back i have a video of me cutting back all my annual pots my mizu was like clear down here and it was getting really heavy and i was worried it was just going to rip right off and so i came back and cut it back but as you can see everything's just trying to mix together and so it's really beautiful but it just needed to cut that verbena back to make sure everything can shine <laughs> so in another week it's going to look really amazing these geraniums were really getting swallowed up so i cut them back got one little bloom here <laughs> so i cut back the verbena sorry so that these could breathe a little bit and so we'll check it in a month and see what it looks like it's going to be really pretty but i'm i'm happy that i cut it back i probably should have done it a little sooner but i've really really enjoyed this window box a lot okay we'll look over here at my rose of sharon standard and the buds are get kind of closed at night we're kind of at the end of its bloom i'll insert a video of these with their blooms open it's such a pretty thing i love looking out here there's a dark contrast back here so it really stands out when i'm looking at it through my window and this creeping jenning coming out of my pot is kind of out of control <laughs> but it looks really pretty i might give it a cut back i might not it's kind of starting to cover up my pot so it might be a little too aggressive we'll see and then i came in here 
and I had this Russian blue sage. It was kind of on the end of its bloom, and this coneflower I need to come back and trim up. And then one of my nephophias is not doing very well. I'm not sure why. They're all getting treated the same way, but I'm hoping it will, <laughs> will really bounce back. We'll see. It looks like it's almost a goner, but I have really enjoyed this here, and I, I hope it lasts. We'll see. So this area has been fun. I want more sunflowers back here next year. I want to try to do something around the shed and I've also been thinking about maybe doing some blackberries back here. I don't know. That's where my husband keeps all his tractor equipment so it might get in the way but <laughs> we'll see. Look how pretty those are. Okay so I'm gonna let you enjoy the creek for just a second. It's just so nice. Okay, so I love how this is starting to hang over. I think in a month I'll have some really beautiful <laughs> hanging petunias right there. I just really, really love it. Things are pretty much the same back here. Um, I did buy a bunch of Hakanakloa to just fill in this area because I love it so, so much. Hopefully it will do well. This one's done great, so I think it will. But yeah, I'm gonna do some more changes in here. I also went back and looked at my video from last year. It's actually posted on my nail channel. I couldn't move it over to this channel. It has my garden tour from last year. And I was, I'm was i always kind of impatient about how long this vinca is taking to fill in. But when I looked back, I was like, wow, it actually has been filling in really nicely. And so I shouldn't complain about it, <laughs> but it still looks kind of dry out here sometimes. Right now it looks a little bit dry. It's rained a lot, so I didn't turn the sprinklers on today. And so it does look a little bit dry, but I'll show you some areas where it's really filling in nicely. This probably doesn't get quite enough sun. I'm trying to decide if I should move it. In fact, I might move it over here when we get rid of that tree. I think this will be a good spot for it. Look how pretty that is. Love it so much, but I think it'll get more sun over there. So anyway, <laughs> not quite as many blooms that I wanted, but it's really, really pretty. I'm going to come in here this fall and split all my hostas and then just kind of do groupings of three of the same kind. That's what I've decided to do in here but let's see i did cut back these petunias just to give them a little break and hopefully they'll last me through till next spring <laughs> we'll see not anything really new to show you here except look how this is filling in oh so exciting in some areas it's just getting pretty dense which is awesome i did also want to pick up a bunch of these these are the black forest cake oh, and now that i know what that means and what that stands for i love them even more because this early summer we actually went to the black forest and had the black forest cake and watched the demonstration and everything and so now they have a little bit more meaning to me <laughs> and they do so well and i love their red blooms that they have they're just so pretty they're kind of a pinky red and i want to do bigger groupings of them like i have here I want to do at least three together in every place there is one. So I've only found one more at the nursery. I'm hoping they'll get more next week, but I'm going to come through and just do large groupings of those just to have that dark pop. I think they're so, so pretty. Okay. Yeah. Not too much going on here. This is kind of a problem area for me. This whole thing actually up here, the dirt is just not that great. <laughs> I wanted to show you the creek here as it goes around the bend. It's so pretty at night and there's just a cool breeze that comes off of it, which is super nice. And now that we've had rain, it's a little bit more full and not quite as swampy. Sometimes when it gets super hot in August, it can get a little bit swampy. I wanted to mention too that we have been in this yard for, this is its third year. And we did have them come in and put all these boulders in. I think I'm gonna come and do a video on like a before and after. But this is a natural creek and it does have a spillway that's not quite natural. There's a pipe actually that runs under here and there's like a cement wall over it. And so that's what gives us on the edge of our property this waterfall, which we absolutely love. So it's kind of fun. Eventually I do want to get some plants around here, but the area is so dry. I'm going to have to work, oh, Piper, <laughs> with our sprinklers 
and figure some things out. But I've been watching aquascapes and I really want to come in here and just fill it in with plants eventually and just make it look really beautiful and nice and lush. So one day that will happen, but I have a lot of work to do in this yard and it's coming along. But while we're here, let's look at these Supertunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid. <laughs> I think that's what they're called. They're new. I knew they wouldn't do super awesome in this spot. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't put these because I've seen other people grow these. They're new from Proven Winners this year. And I've seen other people grow them and they do amazing. It's just that this area is kind of crappy <laughs> soil. Um, but I wanted to try something here and do something here. Piper's so funny. She just walked across the creek. <laughs> when it's a little bit lower, she'll do that. It's so cute. So those are them. And they look okay. I think I need to give them more fertilizer. I've been neglecting them a little bit. This is our fire pit area, which is really fun. We don't really do fires down here like we thought we would, but it's nice to come and sit down here by the creek. Especially now that it's cooling down, I think we're gonna get outside a little bit more. So over here are my Atlas roses. I got another flush of them, but they never seem to be flushing at the time I'm doing my videos. But this Superbina pink cashmere, which is new from Proven Winners as well, is just taking forever to get going in my yard. And I'm not sure why. I think it might be because these aren't in full sun all day. I need to have them in a different spot, but they're finally starting to get some buds. And I can tell that they're pretty vigorous because the soil right here is not very great. Um, but I'm hoping this next month I'll have a lot more blooms, but look how pretty those are. I love them. I'm going to use them next year, but I think I'm going to put them in just a little different area. But I think next month I'm going to have some more buds from these. Okay, up here I have some more Serendipity Allium and love it so much. There's not much else to talk about up here. Let's get a look around this area. I love looking out my window and seeing this view. I think it's so pretty. I do need to add a few things here and I've bought a few plants. I'm not sure that's where they're going to go, but I feel like I need some purple in that spot. So I really need to figure out what I'm going to do, but I'm loving the black eyed Susans up there. My stone crop sedum is looking really great. I love the chartreuse color and it will turn into a nice warm pink as we get colder. My peony foliage is looking good. I haven't had too much powdery mildew this year. Last year I had quite a bit, but I just bought another barberry bush to put right there too. So I've got some changes coming in this area, but it's looking really nice. This area is really filled in and the super tunia bubblegum doesn't get a ton, a ton of sun, but like I said, it's starting to bloom now finally. I think it's just because it's in part sun. I'm hoping these roses do well in my part sun. It said they can take a little shade. We'll see. They're not getting huge or massive about here, but it does look like I'm getting a few more buds. This, these are the Gertrude Jekyll. So not much else happening here. It's kind of the hot part of summer. This Gara is so interesting. I have some that are like long and wild. And then these are short and they haven't really done anything. And I've heard Garden Answer talk about hers and hers is kind of doing the same thing. I think we have the same one. So it's not quite doing what I expected. So I might move it. I don't think it maybe gets enough sun is what I'm guessing. I did come around and put chelated iron on these. You can tell these are getting darker green. They're looking a little brighter in the video, but I still need to add more because there's some lighter green in there. But I think that's part of the problem with this one. It just hasn't done quite well, but I did move it this spring also. But look how pretty, I love these. And another Superbina, probably doesn't get enough sun. This is the Peachy Keen. Look how beautiful this color is. Just need to learn what spots to put things in in my yard. <laughs> I'm still learning. But this area is just coming together pretty nicely. Okay, we're gonna pan over here and we'll come up here in this area. I cut back these bushes. I still haven't looked up what they are. They got hit really hard with spider mites, just like a lot of things did in my yard early summer when we had a heat wave. Cut them back, this was all sticks, <laughs> but it's barely starting to flush back defoliated. 
almost 100%. I was a little bit worried about it, but it's bouncing back just fine. And it's much happier now that I've trimmed it back. I probably should have came and trimmed it a little sooner. I only did it like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And then look at this limelight hydrangea. So pretty. You can always tell the first year stems because they're nice and strong and healthy and tall. And then the new ones are a little bit lower. So next year, all those lower ones will be bigger and stronger and they're so beautiful. And I just noticed today that they're starting to get that pink tint to them. So beautiful. I didn't know how awesome hydrangeas were until two years ago or three years ago. <laughs> I just have really learned about them and how much I love them. You don't see a ton in Utah. You see a lot of these limelight primes because they do really, really well in our area. Well, you have to be careful about where you put them because they can be kind of burned if they get too much sun, especially in the late afternoon, but they're beautiful and I want to stick more in my yard. The smooth hydrangea and the lime lights, oh Piper scared me, are both ones that do well in our area and you just have to put them in like specific spots. So I should get one more round of a couple iris blooms. We'll see. That should be coming up in a month or so. This area I want to kind of work on and find something that can maybe bloom here during the summer. My delphinium looking a little sad but that's okay. Let's <laughs> see what it does this fall. It might not be a good spot for it. I don't know. It was really beautiful in the spring though. And maybe they just do this in the summer. I need to do a little bit more research, but my Campanula are starting to give me another small flush. They usually will give me one more flush as it gets a little bit cooler. So that's so fun to see. Love this opalescence flock. So beautiful. So happy it's here. Once in a while I do get one that just dies like this. Don't know why. <laughs> gonna have to do some research on that too but I left that up purposely <laughs> so I could show you guys that I don't know what happens in the front I had that happen too and these are the something nougat I'll put the name on the screen and they're so beautiful they're like a chartreuse green but I did mention in my last video they start to turn black and then they go completely black and I just wanted to show that to you so see it turning black it's the only thing I don't like about them but I'll take it because they're beautiful <laughs> I'll just have to make sure I'm good at cutting them back. And I love them with this pink and then this Queen Nectarine Agastache. I need to give this more iron as well. As you can see, it's completely chlorotic. Ah, this one's suffering. Things suffer here in my area. Check out my last video, what I do to treat my annuals and chelated iron and everything. That video will tell you what I'm talking about. <laughs> But I went back and deadheaded a bunch of these and it's looking nicer. I love this hosta, this blue hosta. And I'm gonna split it and just have a grouping here because I love the color of it. It's kind of a blue. Don't know the name of it, but it's just beautiful. And you can see I added chelated iron to these as well, my lupine. And that one's taking it up a little more and this one needs a little bit more. You can see the difference, that dark green foliage. It's just happier and healthier. And then not too much going on over here in my fireplace bed lots of pink <laughs> next year i'm gonna have to do some more I, I don't know what to do in this area i'm still learning my garden but i want to do something a little more to plug in a little more color in the summer it has a lot of spring color but it needs definitely some more summer interest but i love the hydrangea that you can get a nice view of it on that side and this side as well so really pretty oh let me show you this super Bina. This is the pink cashmere also. I just put it in tons of different spots and it's really starting to get going in this area, which I'm super happy about because like I said, it's taking forever literally everywhere, but look how pretty that is. Love it. Okay, let's go over here. This side has given me some issues. I don't know what's going on. This dirt is just terrible. I thought these lantana would flourish in this crazy dirt, <laughs> the dry, yucky dirt, but they're kind of struggling. This gara is not in the right spot. My landscapers put it in these areas and it just needs to be tucked back. I definitely like it tucked back in here. I don't know if you can see it in there. It adds a little bit of whimsy in the middle of other flowers. Let me get closer. So you can see that there. And I think it's so pretty like that. This is like my cottage garden style area I would say and I do love the whimsy it adds I have some back there too you can't see them as well because they're against the fence but during the day when the sun's on them you can really see them so 
I like them tucked back in areas like that. Just don't really like them just right here on the border. I need to find out what to put, what to put here. It's just really a hard spot for me to figure out. And another hydrangea that's suffering down there have water issues down here. I need to figure that out, but we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> what we are gonna talk about are these new plants that I planted yesterday. Look how pretty these coneflowers are. And this dirt is terrible. I just hope they last. I really hope, hope, hope they last. I came in here and put a lot of compost in hoping to just save this area and I'll probably add more as we get into fall. But look how beautiful these are. These are the Kismet Raspberry and so gorgeous. So I have a row of them along here and then I mixed in this thread leaf Coreopsis and it's a pale yellow and it's so pretty. <laughs> So pretty intermixed with this and then I have these grasses that are gonna get nice and tall and beautiful and I have a video of me planting all this up this dirt is so dry it doesn't get watered well so I hope these comb flowers do well look how pretty though I love the colors of it and you can even see my coleus back there is finally flushing out it's not very big <laughs> but it's getting a little bit of color um, I just think it's because the soil is just not that great so let's hop up here and end with this section this is where I added more compost I had a little extra so I added it all through these plants I'm gonna come in this fall and add compost to this whole entire area just to really help it out because it just it needs help <laughs> these flowers are just doing okay the begonias these are the non-stop begonias but they totally halted they're just all look like this. These vinca aren't doing that great. I don't know what's going on. These are terrible, but the proven winners begonias, I really wanted to put the white proven winner ones in here. I couldn't get a hold of them. And the one, the proven winners ones that I have out front are doing amazing. And so I'm really going to get the white ones in here next year because I just want white right here. I just want it to pop. <laughs> but here's the coleus. Not quite the showstopper I thought it would be, but it is adding some color now, which is nice. Not much else to show around here because everything's just not really showing off right now in this area. So anyway, that is my garden tour for the backyard. I'll give you a few areas. The yard lights have come on now, one's shining on Piper. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching and joining me as I polish my garden and I hope I inspire you to polish your garden too. We will see you next time. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.